Hey everyone, good morning. Welcome to my channel. Today we are discussing causes and ways to prevent diabetes, commonly called as sugar. How glucose, how diabetes is caused due to our lifestyle, or uh, what is the actual mechanism of how diabetes forms in our body? and ways to prevent if there are any for diabetes. So first we need to understand what is insulin to understand diabetes. Insulin is a chemical that is secreted from our pancreas but let us get to that later. First let us understand blood glucose. Whenever we eat any food, the energy from the food is absorbed into our body and converted into glucose. Let us not get into specifics, but this is, how, this is what it is. Carbohydrates are the most energy rich, so whenever we have carbohydrates, it is a direct source of energy. And that energy is converted into glucose or it is separate, glucose is separated from the food and then it is directly absorbed into our blood. Got it? Now, for a healthy body, in a healthy body, the complete glucose, if you separate that out of your blood, it is around one teaspoon, one teaspoonfuls. Right? Bad things happen when this balance changes, when it increases or it reduces like anything. You must have heard uh, high sugar level in the blood, low sugar level, so someone fainted. So, in a healthy body with a healthy uh, blood stream, the quantity of blood glucose level stays at 1 teaspoonful. Okay. Now what happens when we consume food? When we consume carbohydrates, the, the energy from the food is converted and absorbed into the blood from our uh, intestines. Once the glucose comes into our blood and the body recognizes that the glucose level is higher than what is required uh, in the blood it directs the pancreas to secrete insulin. Now to understand what insulin does, assume think of insulin as a kind of a whistle of a drill sergeant. During school you might have had physical activity, physical education or a PT uh, class you must have done drills so whenever the uh, the teacher blows his or her whistle all the students stand in a line and then when he says to start and then he whistles then they start marching so it is like that somewhat when the body secretes when the pancreas secretes insulin all the blood cells listen to it and when the whistle blows, the blood takes the glucose inside it and then it sends it to the liver and the muscle mass. There are only two recognized storehouses of glucose in our body. One is the liver and the other are your muscle tissues. Your liver can store maximum about 20, 15 to 20% of the glucose, that's it, not more than that, of your overall body's capacity. About 80% of the glucose storing capacity is in the muscle fibers. So, it send, so what the blood does, once the insulin is blowing its whistle, the blood sends the glucose into the liver to store some and the rest to the muscle fibers. 
and this system works tremendously well whenever you observe yourself whenever you have any high energy food like rice or ice cream or anything even fatty foods because at the end everything gets converted into blood glucose and then it uh, gets absorbed you don't suddenly uh, faint or, or fall sick because your body is working really well to quickly bring down the glucose level into the uh, balanced territory and then sending the additional glucose into your muscles your liver and the excess glucose that is still uh, left out is being converted to fat and stored into fat tissue so just to understand perfectly insulin tells your body to store away the glucose where and when it's necessary and the stored glucose is uh, used by your body when it is required now you must be thinking why does muscles require so much and why does it have 80% of the body's glucose storing capacity why isn't glucose always stored into uh, converted into fat and then stored under the skin so glucose or glycogen like how biologists referred it to refer to it to they are the fuel for the engines that are our muscles think of our body like a car you know the bigger the car the heavier the car the lesser mileage it gets why because the say, the engine needs to pull the weight transport the weight and it needs to burn a lot more fuel also as the size of the engine increases the amount of petrol or diesel it consumes increases right right now you might have observed that even when your car is stopped at a traffic light and it is idling even then just to maintain its maintain the engine uh, in its on condition for lack of a better word it keeps idling and it keeps burning petrol for the engine to be running right same with the muscles don't think that muscles only consume glucose glycogen only when they are activated or you are doing some physical activity if there is muscle mass muscle fibers just for them to stay alive and for them not to waste away it needs a basal metabolic level of glucose or glycogen for them to stay that way right that is one next whenever you are actually doing physical activity it's not that you have to have food then only you can do the physical activity no right you have your meals only 3 times a day or for some people two times a day right how is the body keeping energy for you to carry on your day to day activities daily without consuming food every second no right whatever glucose that is required for your muscles to function is stored in the muscles for some time that's why when there are marathon runners after uh, some amount of miles under the belt they uh, have some food packets with them that they consume quickly for a quick release of energy or else they would not be able to go uh, continue the uh, finish the marathon they need store so what happens is the glycogen that was stored in their muscles was exhausted at that point and then they had to consume more so this is why muscles store glucose 
so coming to what happens to the excess energy that is left after all of it is stored in the liver and the muscle fibers the excess energy in the form of glycogen is converted into fat molecules and stored under our skin or there are other places also to store but the majority and the most capacity of storing fat is under our skin and it is almost limitless it takes a superhuman effort to exhaust the fat storing capacity of our body you can store fat in your uh, thighs stomach like all males know about under our uh, skin uh, under the pads of our uh, hands everywhere so there is no limit to it but that said it's not that you have a lot of food today and then immediately it is it gets converted into fat and stored into fat tissue if there is already a fat tissue there it also has some specific capacity not more than that it takes some time to develop the fat tissue for storing the fat so if you assume that the fat storing capacity is like a bucket reaching the capacity of the bucket and then you and then overflowing it uh, that again has negative consequences to increase the size of the bucket it takes some time so uh reaching the capacity of the bucket is already hard but if you do it and if you do it a lot of times some of the fat gets uh, stored into the liver and then because of that it is the major cause of fatty liver disease but that is not the scope of today's topic i will talk about that later but that is it you can also exhaust the fats the body's fat storing capacity as well and that also has negative consequences like eating a lot that's why you might have observed people who are obese or overweight they are able to eat more food than more food more fatty food as well and they are still not full because they have more capacity to store fat than uh, people who are lean that they can't eat more than one particular capacity that is the cause now coming to how exactly diabetes forms in the body how does it start how does this insulin resist resistance start building now the excess energy is converted into fat and it is being stored in the fat tissue under the skin of our body what if the fat storage is over there is spillage the excess fat that has been generated will be sent by the blood to your muscle fibers and your liver long story short bad things happen when fat is stored in the liver more than its capacity for example fatty liver disease but we'll get to that in a different video this is not under this scope when the fat is sent to the muscle fibers the muscles capacity to store glycogen reduces dramatically if the capacity of the muscles to store glycogen was 10 say just giving a index number to it it reduces by 5 to 6 almost the capacity of its storage of glucose becomes half so even the muscle mass that you have built and it's very difficult to build it even that muscle mass becomes very ineffective in storing glycogen what does that result in higher blood glucose level for this what happens brain thinks this is bad this is bad let us secrete 
let us get the pancreas secrete more insulin this becomes into a vicious cycle pancreas secretes insulin higher and higher amounts of insulin to get the blood glucose level under control what i was mentioning 1 teaspoon full of glucose and because of this higher amount of insulin the blood starts generating resistance to this because essentially blood does not have any other place to store glycogen right there is uh, muscle is ineffective and it has reached its limit and anyway the body was not that active in the first place the liver that also has finished its capacity of storage of glycogen blood does not have any other place to store glycogen than itself so the glucose stays in the blood higher and higher levels of glucose insulin increases so whatever so for the same amount of insulin the blood previously it used to formerly it used to store uh, send glycogen to different parts of the body with the same amount of insulin now it requires more insulin for it to disperse of the excess amount of glycogen this is called insulin resistance building and as and when this increases to a certain level the body reaches a pre diabetic level and on its progress towards full fledged diabetes this is the mechanism essentially now you might be thinking that what is the problem there are lots of people living with diabetes lots of people have diabetes around you they are having their pills that the doctor has prescribed to get their sugar levels under control glucose levels under control blood glucose levels or some people who have higher level of insulin resistance they actually get syringes to inject insulin into their blood directly so what is the problem you might be thinking that we live with diabetes lots of people do live with diabetes what are the bad effects of diabetes is people with diabetes have a 100% higher chance of fatality in the next decade compared to someone without diabetes now what do i mean by that if there is a person with diabetes and there is a person without diabetes all other variables remaining the same the probability of the person with diabetes succumbing to any sort of morbid morbidity and dying in the next decade is 100% more as in twice as likely than a person who does not have diabetes to die in the next decade so diabetes by itself it does not kill people but because of the higher levels of glucose in the blood it slowly but surely starts damaging every particular organ in the body liver kidneys you name it all bodies slowly start to die out and they start becoming ineffective to maintain the body's usual processes and that leads to early death and the problem is diabetes is a preventable disease but generally people do not deem it so they think yeah we have reached 40s we have reached 50s definitely we have to have diabetes right everyone has diabetes at this age they get alarmed when they get diabetes at a younger age maybe in their 30s but diabetes even at 40s or 50s it is completely preventable absolutely preventable it is not in our fate that you get diabetes even though in your family everyone has diabetes maybe the older ones parents or grandparents or uncles aunts everyone it is not compulsory it's not mandatory that you have to get diabetes you can still live a healthy life without diabetes as well 
we'll come to the preventive steps now so some small steps if you take in your daily life you will be able to prevent early onset diabetes or avoid diabetes completely in your life and they are very simple it's not very difficult first thing directly hitting the cause of the problem blood glucose level spikes whenever you have carbohydrates which are pure carbohydrates now what do i mean by that pure refined carbohydrates that are ultra processed for example say chips that you directly eat from your uh, store bought packets anything that are sealed and they say that it's good for the next 12 to 16 months all of them are ultra processed how can any food stay safe for such a long time because they have added lots of preservatives and chemicals on it that is called ultra processed so when i said refined carbohydrates example of them are white rice white bread all of these you must be knowing this having the having these foods they are very easy for the body to process digest assimilate and release the glucose directly into your blood so it's very easy for the body to do that now to avoid this avoid the spike glucose spike you can have these carbohydrates not a problem have these carbohydrates with some sort of foods that slows your digestion down for example having foods that are high in fiber what are foods that are high in fiber green vegetables salads onions cucumbers carrots so usually indian foods you must have observed they have usually a side of cut vegetables that can be eaten raw like onions cucumbers tomatoes and all like i was mentioning so sticking with a traditional indian meal plan is also a good idea the raw vegetables that you have have a lot of fiber so they form a base at the bottom of your stomach just before the food enters your intestines for digestion the fiber acts as a stopper slowing down your digestion process and the absorption of glucose into your blood this smoothens out the curve instead of giving you a glucose spike when you have rice or whatever having the fiber in between gives you a better glucose level curve in your blood which should ultimately impact how quickly how much insulin is required to get your glucose level back under control simple thumb rule is have fibrous food before your starchy meal the second way that you can prevent early onset diabetes and this is not related to your food intake it is building up your muscle mass muscle fibers it may sound difficult to do but it is not and even a very small delta or an increase in muscle mass in your body plays a plays an exponential role in storing extra glycogen in your blood so i can't stress this enough building muscle mass is absolutely important for preventing diabetes your blood and your insulin has a very large storehouse of storing extra glycogen in your muscle fibers and in general building muscle mass you can't go wrong it prevents a whole lot of metabolic and lifestyle diseases that are being caused nowadays 
across the world and particularly in our country now a general advice of how you can keep your diabetes or your blood glucose levels in check under regular monitoring you should have a minimum of two tests per year better if you could do it four times a year but two times a year is a really good way to keep your blood glucose levels in check you will at least know what to do how to course correct if there are some deviations particularly in your blood test keep a track on your hb a1c results hemoglobin a1c it stands for a1c is a biomarker for how much glucose on average as a percentage of your blood was there on average in the last 3 months usually our blood cells are alive for 3 months the lifetime of a blood cell is 3 months so that's why this particular marker will let you know on average last 3 months how your lifestyle was did you have lots of glucose spikes because there is a tendency of glucose to pair or bind with red blood cells so that's why as soon as your uh, your blood gets combined or uh, bonded with the glucose molecule they reflect into this hba1c test a1c is the percent of glucose level in your blood a normal result is between 4% to 5.6% if you have your hba1c levels below 5.6% you have nothing to worry if it's below 4 you have something to worry because that could indicate low blood sugar which is also bad 4 to 5.6 is what you have to aim for if you are coming closer to 5.6 it would be better if you could get some control over your blood sugar spikes if your hba1c level is above 5.7% your a1c percent above 5.7% and in between 5.7 and 6.4% that indicates pre diabetic level of hba1c levels you are in a very large danger or danger of contracting diabetes quickly this is a pre diabetic level expert say and above 6.5% is you have diabetes there is nothing you can do about it but still if you can inculcate these preventive measures you might and there is evidence that you can get back your hba1c levels below 6.5% or even below the 5.6% a1c levels for you to be not diabetic so there is evidence people have brought it back down through exercise muscle building and building back the insulin resistance or reducing the insulin resistance that was built due to the lifestyle a disclaimer this video is for those who are not having type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is sometimes you get it very early maybe even in your childhood because of genetic factors this video is not for them this is for type 2 diabetes which is absolutely preventable in my opinion by just changing some small things in our lifestyle so this is for those with risk of type 2 diabetes or people who want to prevent that and not for the people who already have type 1 diabetes within them that dealing about dealing with the type 1 diabetes persons is not in the scope of this video so guys i hope you like this video this is it this video in a short summary this video told you about what is insulin resistance what is insulin basically 
and what are glucose spikes in blood and where does glucose go and store themselves within the body and ways to prevent diabetes early onset diabetes within us if it is there in our hands and i am stressing this again i am emphasizing this again preventing diabetes is completely in our own hands and we can script our future if we can follow these simple steps to prevent it affecting our lives so thank you and please comment if you have any questions regarding this or you have any suggestions of topics that i can take up in future videos peace